Over the years, we start out planting this little tiny plant, for example, a boxwood. And years later, we're in a house a lot longer than we ever expected, and this boxwood is covering our windows. It's almost growing to the, uh, to the gutters. It could be blocking our walkways. What do you do? You have two choices. You can rip it out and start over, but ideally, you can rely on the fantastic root system that this plant has created. And in the spring, usually sometime in March, the root system takes all the waters and all the sugar and nutrients from the year before and starts pushing it into the upper part of the plant. That's an ideal time to prune. And I'm calling this renewal pruning, rejuvenation pruning. And so March is a great time. Now, occasionally we might prune a little bit here or there hard for holiday decorations, but normally March is my recommendation before your boxwoods begin to grow. Now, you may not cut back severely your English boxwoods, which tends to be a little slower growing, or your dwarf boxwoods. I'm talking more of the so-called American boxwood or the Korean boxwood, um, like you see here. And if you look, you can see where we've pruned this here in March, and it looks great. Uh, we cut them anywhere from 12 inches to 18 inches. And um, as you'll see, we'll find a lot of things. We were wondering where the skunks were nesting. And hopefully the skunks won't come out now, but the uh, area that we blocked off underneath this uh, tool shed uh, came apart and the skunks are there. You also find the other reason you may want to prune around porches or around siding is that the siding due to not getting enough sun is pretty much deteriorating. And you can see up top where it is getting a little more sun, the siding is in better shape. So there are reasons to go ahead and prune. Another problem that occurs with overgrown boxwood is when we have ice and snow, especially a lot of it, it will weigh the branches down. For example, years ago, this branch had been weighed down pretty much to the ground, very little growth. So it's another reason if you have that problem, you might want to prune these. Just come in 12 to 18 inches. It's not hard. It is important to get good, high quality tools. And you're just gonna come in and prune just like this. It's a great workout. You can still see a little growth in and around. Um, coming out of the base, so there are shoots and buds at the base of this boxwood, but 12 to 18 inches. Sometimes I'll even cut them a little shorter. And as you can see, and I'll use a hand shears if need be for the little things, but for the large things, you're gonna want a good heavy duty pruner. And if you want, you also have the option for a little handsaw. And so if you do have some growth that's pretty heavy, you can come right through. If you want to prove to your neighbors that cutting back some of your boxwood hard like this really works, go ahead and leave or pre-prune a year earlier one plant. Then you can show how well this looks. And so if your neighbor has that overgrown boxwood around their house, it'll give them reason to clean up around their home. I'm Mark Viette. Join me next time In the Garden. For more garden tips, go to InTheGardenRadio.com.